Um, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you all for um, coming tonight. Um, it's uh, quite of an intensive um, uh, week with a lot of uh, different events. We actually, at the same time, I don't think that's ever happened in Athens. We have a lecture of Wang Zhu and Hashim um, Sarkis. Um, I am very pleased and honored to uh, uh, have these two extremely uh, talented architects uh, with us, Anne Lacaton from Lacaton and Vassal from France, and Gloria Cabral, uh, a Brazilian Paraguayan uh, architect. And um, what brings us here uh, tonight is, is the, the this Rolex Arts Festival, which is basically um, a celebration of uh, 20 years of the mentorship program, the mentorship and protege program, which uh, what it does basically, it gives the opportunity to uh, talented artists to uh, work together with established artists, uh, artists in the various uh, disciplines of the arts. So it's not only about architecture, uh, the program runs on uh, film, visual arts, uh, dance, uh, uh, literature, theater, uh, etc. So this week, and this, uh, particularly this weekend, starting uh, tomorrow, uh, with the full program of the festival, there are many different events across these disciplines uh, on eight different venues. And I think if you can go to uh, rolex.org, you can learn everything about the program and uh, reserve your seat to uh, all these incredible events. Um, now, um, Anne and Gloria that are here uh, with us tonight and we will have this uh, conversation, they are actually part of the program. Uh, Gloria was uh, um, a protege in 2014 of uh, Peter Zunthor and uh, Anne Lacaton is the current uh, uh, mentor uh, with Arina Brahemin, who is the uh, current protege, um, which, is, which is also here with us tonight. Um, <clears throat> so, as part of this um, uh, festival, to, together with, with Gloria, for the past four days, uh, we run a, a workshop uh, next door with 14 uh, students, two, two students coming from each of the seven architecture schools of Greece. Uh, the workshop uh, title was uh, Play Streets, and basically uh, it dealt with this idea of how with very small interventions we can transform and give new identity to underutilized sites and specifically to um, small pedestrian alleys in the downtown of Athens. I think. Uh, different directions and strategies uh, um, uh, came out from, from the discussions. We had a nice discussion earlier with Anne and Gloria and, and the students. And in a way, as a closing of these four days, we would like to have that, uh, this conversation uh, and reflect on some of the topics that we uh, discussed during the workshop on, on the city. Um, I think what is really great and how, in a way, uh, Anne's and Gloria's work uh, uh, fit with the context of the discussion is, I think, a commonality that, uh, that I see in their work is that both of them have this ability of taking um, or ordinary or simple spaces and with very simple gestures, transforming them and giving them uh, a completely new dimension and identity. Anne works a lot uh, with whole buildings, with housing, uh, uh, giving programs a completely new uh, life, whereas I think Gloria works a lot at the scale of uh, the material. She recently had a really nice, uh, which is currently on display at the Venice Biennale, a nice installation of uh, um, a wall that is made out of uh, recycled bricks. Um, so I would like to start with the first question, which would be sort of this, in a way, philosophy, and I think Anne, uh, uh, with your partner, you have talked a lot about this, the idea of uh, never, uh, never removing, but always adding a new uh, quality. Um, I was curious, how would you uh, uh, think that this approach, 
can also be applied into the city beyond, uh, let's say, the scale of the material or of the single building? It's, it's about um, the value of the existing. And um, it's something that we have to learn how to, uh, to see it. Um, and this is, this, is, uh, this is a training. Um, we are um, more used to look at uh, the existing as, um, as a kind of problem, um, except for the monuments, except for the old, uh, for the old cities where the value is, uh, is uh, officially defined. But for the, uh, for the, the more um, um, regular uh, architecture, for the, for the city we know and where we are living every day, um, in, in general, there is not enough attention uh, to see what we have in hands, to, um, to learn how to look at the values of the existing. And once we start by observing what is already there, when we start observing with positive eyes, um, looking for what is positive, what is good, uh, what is missing that we should uh, <clears throat> carefully improve, um, and much later, uh, when all these values have been set up, um, then you can start defining where are the real problems, but not inventing at the beginning the problems where there are no problems or where the problems can be always solved by a transformation. So we, uh, we arrive to this uh, uh, strategy um, with this uh, point of view, with this approach of... Uh, looking for the value of the existing, um, revealing the value of uh, what is already there, and uh, um, looking, do, doing that, we arrive to the point that um, we should never demolish anything, but uh, transform, uh, reprogram, reuse, uh, add to adding, uh, bringing what was missing at the beginning and doing all of this with the inhabitants. So it's not, it's not anymore um, a large vision of the city from above where, uh, in fact, what, is in, what could be important could be a, a composition, uh, but now the city is there, the city is already uh, constituted. So what we, uh, what we have to do and what is more interesting and it was also the purpose of your workshop, is uh, to see the city from the ground, to, uh, to look carefully place by place, um, case by case, what we can do to improve and to make the city better. And um, before I get to Gloria, I was wondering, and maybe Gloria, you can ask both uh, questions. Um, let's say in really dense areas. In, in Athens, for example, we have some very dense neighborhoods um, and that lack empty spaces, which I think are um, very important for the citizens. Um, uh, and maybe in this, some of these areas, especially with uh, the past years with the crisis and then uh, with also a demographic issue that uh, the country is sort of facing, so maybe there are some empty buildings. Do, do you see a value in clearing up um, buildings to create, let's say, more public space in these cases? I, I don't want to, to, to talk as a generality because, again, it's, uh, we cannot say, okay, every empty building is a potential place for a public space. But are we sure that any empty building will make an interesting public space? No, because the city has... Uh, is, is, is made in, in, uh, in a certain way. So for me, the, um, an, ex an, a build, an existing building, which is empty, um, is an opportunity to make something. And a public space um, may be outside, but it might be also inside. It might be on the roof, it might be... So um, it's why for us, we have this, uh, Jean-Philippe and me, we have this radicality to say no, no demolition we have to invent a new way, a new strategy of dealing with the existing. Because all, all these empty buildings, they, they are not at the end of the life. 
So, the, and it's why it's, uh, it's uh, important to look at it case by case and not to make it a generality. And the density can be, of course, can be, um, can be felt as, as a problem, but it's, density is also um, interesting because it allows to, uh, um, to prevent, to use uh, natural soils in expanding the city. So in many cities uh, in Europe where the city is very, very expanded because uh, you have these neighborhoods of little houses, we observe that this is a mistake to have these uh, uh, infinite uh, territories occupied by little houses one after one. And uh, in, in these cities, there is uh, the, 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 the concern is how we could redensify a little bit to use much better the soil we have and uh, to avoid to have to use natural soil for uh, for uh, building so in a city where you feel the opposite where you feel as you say that there is probably sometimes too much density it's important to understand how you can introduce again the nature but in a different way so it's why uh, all of this situation, our situation of inventions, um, we have not one solution, but it's important to, to keep all of this uh, and uh, to think. Um, otherwise, when you start uh, removing, it's impossible to know where to stop. Why this one and the next one and the next one. And, and afterwards, well, yeah, there is no more enough activity, enough life. So it's, uh, again, it's uh, the strategy of looking things one after one, case by case, neighborhood by neighborhood, and not as a generality. Gloria? Um, um, some years ago, we was invited uh, to make a, a work in a big favela in, in Buenos Aires, La Villa 31. In Buenos, Aires, in Buenos Aires, it's Villa. And when we walk for this neighborhood, we see the new part, we saw the new part and the, the all the villa. And they say, yes, this is the new part. We take out everything and build again. And, but to build this, we need $1,000 for meter squares to do this. And we spend uh, this time to do this. And, but the time to do this, they grow more, the big favela, and it never was enough. And we are walking in this uh, villa and talking with the engineer and but engineer, if this was a palace, uh, how you do? Because wh uh, why you take out everything? Why you take out all the halls in all the house in in a villa? Because it's not into uh, a normative. It's out the normative, and for this, but a, a palace or a castle made. Uh, hundreds years ago. How you do? You take out because it's not in the normative. No, we create a new normative for this. We study the structure. We understand how work this structure. And we create a new normative for a specific for this and la la la. But we are here. We are seeing the house working, the people living here for 80 years uh, and now, and why this is different. It's, it's building, it's, it's existing, and we need to study the project that we proposed was study the prototypes of this construction, uh, see the, in a neighborhood the common problems like sunglass, uh, no sunglass, sunlight, and uh, the ventilation, and have some common problems, and we can desi design for this problem and make uh, 
pequeñas, eh, small intervention in this, eh, in this existing house, and also we can take out some house, build more density, and put public space to mix and don't do only uh, a neighborhood without other programs in this place. And we start to do this. Uh, the process was stopped because uh, uh, the COVID come. And, but we start to do this like a laboratorio de arquitectura into the favela to uh, work with the, the people into the favela to learn the possibility to change and to create this ventilation, to create the possibility to put light inside and all these things. We can do this because we practice for 20 years, made in this, um, this renovation in, in the existing building. And uh, in some projects that we do in, in Asuncion, we not only take out sand walls, we try to reuse this material. For this, we start to build with demolition material. And we made the calculate that in the budget, we, in a normal budget, we have a, when I start to work in the gabinete, a, a normal budget have 50% for material and 50% for workers. But uh, the, in, in another office is 60%, 65% for material and 35% for workers. And this is crazy because we use more energy for, to produce new material and we have less and less and less uh, mano de obra. And we try to do all the time with the same budget uh, the upside, reuse the material, the demolition, and use only 35% of the budget in material, and use more in uh, the workers. And then start to appear opportunities for uh, another people and for another uh, transformation in the society. Yeah, I think uh, that Gloria points out something very important, is um, the place of people. In, in uh, most of the sustainability uh, <clears throat> um, decision requirements or um, standards, um, finally, the human is not really there. Uh, and it's very important to consider that the, in the neighborhood, it's important to, to take care about uh, the inhabitants. And um, we, what we can observe very often is also the, the removal of buildings, the demolition to change typologies, to, uh, uh, to change neighborhoods, is always a process that uh, arrives to exclusion. Exclusion of uh, people that have to go much far away, and it's, uh, it's always a process of uh, gentrification of the city centers. And um, at the end, it produces uh, some uh, very specific uh, situations, like we can see in some big cities in Europe, like in, in Paris, in London, where finally nobody can anymore live in the, in, uh, in the city center because it's not affordable anymore, even for the middle class. Or, so it's, uh, it's all of this has a lot of consequence, uh, and it's why it's important to consider the, the all of the aspects of the situation. Um, yeah, that's that's very true, and I think um, I think there's a similar conversation also maybe happening today in Athens, uh, maybe due to um, the um, let's say uh, development of tourism, especially in the downtown. And I think in a way that was a bit of the starting point uh, um, of the of the workshop. Um, and, and there we, uh, with Gloria, try to, to see this condition through the lens of children. Um, and so I'm curious, uh, how, how do you feel about that? In a way, do you, do you think 
um, maybe seeing uh, um, an issue like that, uh, that that maybe sort of polarizes different uh, forces within the city, can that maybe create uh, uh, sort of new opportunities, let's say, in, uh, within, within the city, within the discussion for the city? Yes, it's um, what, what I saw with the workshop, it's a very specific topic about addressing some, uh, some places to children. Uh, and it's very true that uh, the children have, may, must have a place in the city as, as also elderly, as the students, as, uh, but uh, the children is probably um, the, 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 the entrance of the, of the subject. And uh, we, we looked uh, today at uh, interesting uh, proposals but uh, f finally, at the end, we had a discussion and uh, uh, we observed that in this neighborhood where the workshop has been developed, there is no more children because it's uh, all uh, uh, hotels or uh, tourism locations. And uh, we, re we always arrive to the same issue that the, the, the city in the, tr in, the, in the transformation by um, the, the financial aspect or to dedicate to a very specific activity like uh, like uh, tourism or or it could be also uh, i don't know business or uh, uh, finally it's uh, it doesn't create a mixed society and this is this is a starting point of the problem of of the city because uh, uh, when when you create zonings like this where the normal population is excluded because it's uh, Everything, every every building, every every square meter is, is located to this uh, very specific activity. It doesn't work. So, um, for me, the what I what I what I so interesting in the workshop is uh, that the, the to take care to all these initiatives that um, that leads uh, to reconsider the public space and to make it more. Uh, more open, more uh, more mixed, more uh, give more opportunities to the the, the citizens. But uh, every it's it's a chain. It can you cannot do things for children if you don't have uh, uh, families or if you don't have schools or if you don't have uh, parks. Or so it's a, it's a kind of system. But the um, finally, the financial approach of the city, as we can see in some central neighborhoods, always leads the, to this uh, uh, loss of uh, families and uh, normal life in the neighborhoods. Yeah, I, um, in, in Asuncion happened something with us, with the, with the city. And some years ago, um, they, the government built a big uh, street to go quickly for one point and the other, but in the border of the city, uh, with the river, with the, sea, uh, with the possibility to see the river. And, the, and we, the, the architect community, asked about public space there. And everyone said, no, no, no. The Paraguayan don't like the public space. The Paraguayan like the garden inside, and no one to uh, want to go to the public space. Don't want to uh, want to go to the to the plaza or to the park. And but no, this is not true. The Paraguayan is human, and we love staying in a public space. And they build the street, and now the people need to. A pretend be a car <laughs> to go for this place and we need to close the street during the weekend because everyone wants to go and stay together because this is the, the la naturaleza del ser humano the nature of the, the human being we need to be together we need to see the other we need to play and when we talk about this neighborhood don't have children. I'm sure that if appear some programs to have a space a little bit more safe than the other's place for children, this street will be full 
the children. The children will appear for every place. And maybe it's not in this neighborhood in the beginning. The people will come. And maybe we change the tourist. Maybe the tourist that want to go there was tourists with family and uh, to go to, and the, the new uh, house uh, uh, will be uh, a bit for families and maybe after open a school, this kind of things. I, I, I try to believe always in the capacity that we have to produce n new space and new, new opportunities. Not the architects or the urban. No, we together, working with the other disciplines, working with uh, the 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 other profession, to uh, to build the society that we we want. Uh, when uh, the people ask me about uh, I'm an architect or something like this. I'm, for me, I'm not an architect. I'm a woman and a, a human being, and the architect is my, my tools to change, the, to try to change the society. And all the profession is, is this, is the tools, the medicine is a tool to try to change the society, and how we, can, we want to change this. Um, uh, I think this is the, the challenge that we have. Uh, we cannot think about uh, uh, everything uh, is um, tapado, cover for the tourists. Uh, no, we can start to change the, the kind of tourists that we want. If the, the imagine, in a dream. <laughs> uh, the tourist here is only families now in, in this neighborhood. All the people who come here are family. But have another children for this neighborhood, and uh, the children have another sensibility, sensibility for, for the place. They don't need language. They have the, the, the uh, balloon for language. Uh, I saw many times in the beach uh, peop uh, children that don't talk nothing, one word, uh, one word th that the other, uh, totally different language. But in the final of the day was big friends and like, but never uh, exist the language to communicate one and the other. And uh, for this, for me, is so important work with a public space for children, because it's, it's a new uh, opportunity to start new process. And, and I think what I was sort of thinking, um, what we were discussing earlier, and, and with the ideas that uh, the students have, and what I think was a common thread is that somehow um, all of the different projects approached the, the city in section. So they added this idea of height, right? Which when, I, when we think, I think about the city, um, it's more in a way um, plan sort of based. We have pedestrians, we have cars, uh, we sort of separate them. As soon as you, you put children in the equ equation, Everyone, you know, designs and, or, or draws uh, things to, to climb, to go on a higher level. So, and it feels that maybe their intu intuition also plays an important role because I think children maybe also um, act, uh, especially in early uh, ages, more with their intuition and rather uh, than sort of being very analytical about uh, how they approach the, the world. And I'm sort of wondering if we can also learn, let's say, from, from this approach and uh, somehow apply it to the way we approach the city. So it's very clear that we are at the point that we have to experience a lot of things because uh, we, we, we are facing uh, very important challenges, as we all know, for, uh, about climate, uh, energy, uh, 
the scarcity of uh, materials. So we have to invent a lot of things, but we have to invent more simply. And, um, and probably something that has been a little lost in the last uh, decades, how to make things simple, how to make uh, invent things, uh, how to be creative with uh, we, what we already have, um, how we can uh, deal with uh, the economy, because uh, the economy is a very important material today. Um, and uh, if, we, uh, if we want to continue doing ambitious things or generous uh, uh, spaces, but with less money, it's very clear that we have to invent a new, new systems. And the new systems, in fact, they, they probably they need um, uh, to, um, to criticize and to reconsider how it was done before and to, uh, to, to, to test, to, uh, to consider also that probably uh, the temporary, could, the temporality could be also different in doing things. Uh, the cohabitation and, uh, and uh, leaving the principle that to do something new we have to remove uh, and to restart from, uh, from scratch. Uh, it's a city like uh, Hassens show that in, in the past nothing was demolished and uh, it was always operated by additional layers, one uh, on the other one. So we have to, uh, to reconsider uh, all uh, the, the, the previous uh, strategies and the way how, uh, how dealing with uh, urban planning, with uh, uh, how to deal with all of this also. But the, the issue is also that um, we don't uh, have in hand all the forces. There are a lot of forces that we don't know and they play against also all of this. Uh, so uh, probably the, um, today what is also changing is also that the power of inhabitants of, of people has increased in our uh, countries, in our democracies. And it's something that we have to deal with now. Uh, we, in France, we can, uh, uh, it's, it's a place we know, I don't, say it as an example, but um, we, see, we are uh, very often uh, informed of uh, big projects of demolitions of housing and uh, um, all the time uh, there is an association of inhabitants who is struggling against this. And uh, discussing with these uh, people, we, uh, we, we really uh, are fascinated by the way how they become very aware citizens, how they know their rights, how they, uh, they, they, they build arguments, how they build dossiers, how they work with lawyers to... Um, and this is very important to take this in account, that the decision sh cannot be any more vertical, but also as you were talking about in this neighborhood where you were uh, working, uh, it's also that we have to trust much more in, uh, in the capacity of the society itself also to create things. Uh, and we, we are at this moment where uh, everything must be uh, uh, reconsidered. Who, is, who has a decision? Uh, but unfortunately, in the story that I tell you about this uh, association, they struggle years and years with all the good, good arguments, but unfortunately, at the end, they always lose. So, the problem is uh, there are still some, uh, some, some problems, but we, um, we are probably in this process of uh, big change, and uh, we, we, as an architect, we must be in this, uh, uh, in this process and try to do the, the best to, uh, uh, to help. Two months ago, I was in Sao Paulo, and I, Sao Paulo is <laughs> an animal, it's a monster, <laughs> it's a, a big, really big city, and have a lot of uh, abandoned buildings. But uh, now I visit one specific building one Sunday to eat there, because they are made in food for the neighborhoods to collect money because they work this uh, foundation, this association or foundation or uh, 
uh, this organization <laughs> um, made food for in Sunday to collect money to uh, continue their work. Uh, it's a group of women who uh, illegal uh, uh, occupate the buildings, the existing buildings, but it's not like a normal illegal occupate. Uh, this group go and clean everything, paint, and make some uh, uh, reform uh, there, and also take some lands uh, near to Sao Paulo, near to the city, but uh, in the rural part, to cultivate food and work together. And uh, this is amazing. And it's something total, uh, totally informal, but have some architects working with there. And we have this capacity to, to transform. Uh, imagine if the discipline worked together and if the, polit the politic too and facilitate this, uh, this kind of occupate, but legally, like all the existing building abandoned can be occupied, can be, how we can do this, how we can create the normatives to occupy this and to use to uh, give house for who uh, don't have, uh, give infrastructure to who decide to uh, live in the street, uh, made this kind of uh, strategy that we really need in all our society. It, it seems um, the way sort of you, you um, both speak that um, observation seems to be uh, quite important part of your of your process um, and correct me if I'm, I'm wrong um, and 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 time also and I think um, something I've been thinking is that I think more and more things uh, move at a really fast pace uh, uh, change really fast uh, but maybe sort of architecture operates at a, at a different slower pace I'm, Curious, how do you uh, um, react on this condition uh, with your with your work? So first, uh, it's, it's very true that the observation is uh, the first uh, the, the first uh, part of the strategy. Without observation, it's impossible to understand uh, to understand the very complex situation where we have to to work because it's it's not it's never simple. So the observation means that um, you look at things with um, not neutrality, but um, with, um, in, in a way, in forgetting your background. Because probably it's, uh, this, the, the way that you can uh, um, catch the most important number of, uh, of, um, of, of things, of a situation. So first of it, it's very, it's very important that it's very clear that today in the process, um, we have not always this time, which is something uh, really uh, amazing because the, the, um, the time of uh, development of a project is much longer today uh, because there are some phases that takes very long, but uh, the, time, um, the time is not given to uh, intelligence, it's not given to study. It's given to administration, uh, to, uh, uh, to law, it's given to, uh, to finance, it's given, but it's uh, the time of thinking is compressed more and more. And it's very clear that it's something we have to struggle against, to claim uh, to have this time of thinking because more thinking, more studies, means that uh, you produce uh, a much better project. And why the observation is also so much important? Because it prevents to go to very standard solutions. Because when you know very well a situation, when you have understood 
uh, what is, uh, what is uh, the, the, the subject, what is the topic, then you can think uh, to uh, the, um, the solution or the options of solution. And sometimes they are not those that at the beginning were imposed to you. And it's very important to, to, uh, to discuss about that. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not easy uh, because uh, besides we had also all these normatives that, uh, uh, that create a pressure on the projects, but um, it's, it's, it's very important to claim this. And, uh, but it's, I, I, I see that it's more and more, and more difficult because it seems that the speed uh, now is part of our lives even if we uh, recognize that we don't know why we speed so much, because it doesn't produce much better. Uh, but it's, I, I don't know, it's something collective that we have also to collectively uh, ourselves, when we are in a situation of demanding something to somebody else, we should also uh, take care that we, uh, we, uh, we let, we let this, this person uh, the time to prepare the answer. So um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a very difficult uh, world today because uh, many, many things are uncertain. Uh, we don't know exactly where we are going. But finally, uh, uh, in, in this uh, kind of uh, maelstrom, uh, finally, what, em what emerged is fi finally the capacity of the human. And this is something probably that we have to take in account as a, as a, as a strength in uh, in in the project. Um, I think we uh, our time is marcado for this <laughs> for this everything need to be quickly and uh, util and uh, and have one. Brazilian activist, one indigenous, uh, Ailton Krenak. He have a book named A Vida Não É Útil. The life is not útil and útil, useful. The life is not useful. We live in a, in a rhythm that we believe that everything is useful and we need to uh, be effective and do quickly the things and yeah also the the construction time is not quickly but all the efforts for the industry is to be quickly the the time of the construction but today uh, this evening I hear you uh, say not because we spend time doing some project this project need to build. And this was, oh, this is so nice. Yeah, we don't need to build all that we, no, we spend time in this and we use, I lost my time uh, doing this and now, yeah, respect this. No, a vida no es útil. Uh, the, the Guaranias in, in Paraguay, in my country, to cazar the animals, they prepare these uh, flechas, sorry, my English. And they prepare the flecha, the perfect one, and after pain, pain, paint, because what's important made a celebration in this moment, then will we take life for some uh, a animal, and but we, we they need to celebrate this moment, and they paint with color and made the more beautiful flecha to do this, and we lost this. Why? Or we almost lost. <laughs> Maybe not in all the corner, but uh, we we need to keep this. We need to uh, see the the important thing to have time to do things, uh, have time to do nothing too, to think only, or um, have time to take out the shoes and walk uh, without sh shoes in connection with the, the so, the, con el suelo, con la, and 
Yeah, we we are uh, in a way that we think that we cannot stop, but after uh, all this life, crazy life, come the the COVID time and stop everything. And we need to remember two years ago, I remember this time, and don't forget so quickly this, and learn for this time. Learn that we don't need to take a car, we don't need to make many things, we don't need to buy a lot of clothes, we don't need to uh, build another shiny building, we don't need, and uh, we can reduce all us a necessity, because it's not a necessity. And if we change, or if we remember, we can see these other ways, and see that la vida, a vida no es uh, Yeah, I think we all uh, agree, we will just say, of course. Um, but to, to come back to this, um, the, what you say about the rapidity of things, in, in um, architecture, urban planning, because it's, it works with big mass of money. And uh, today we observe that um, some companies, some uh, owners, some clients, they ask uh, studies that should be made in a very fast time. Um, and they ask studies um, why they don't know exactly what they want to do. But the study uh, creates money. And the speed creates money. And uh, as architect, as urban planner, landscaper, we are in the middle of this. And uh, of course, we try to, uh, to break the, 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 the system, but it's, uh, it's very fast. So um, what is very important is to analyze um, any time we are asked for a commission, what is, uh, what is the validity? What is, what is serious in this, uh, in this debate? Is it producing something important? And I recognize that it's, uh, it's, it's very hard, but probably it's uh, the only way as architects that we have to, uh, to survive at, at the short term. And, and, but maybe also many times um, other competitions or commissions, typically uh, we respond to a brief, right, to a given program, which basically reflects um, very important decisions that have already been made um, on a project. But a, a lot of your work um, seems to be challenging that because <clears throat> the end result is, is something that maybe expands the program. So it's something not maybe prescribed um, in the original brief of the project. But so I'm wondering, do, do you have, um, is there a particular process about that, or do you have the opportunity to um, sit on the table, maybe uh, while the, the sort of program of the project is being formed, or do you consider that important for architects? I think again, it's uh, this time of um, analysis, of understanding that it's very important to know where you are, in which situation you are, because um, today when uh, we start the competition, we receive a huge box of material. Most of it is not necessary at the early stage to do something. But as, um, as you have to respond to everything, you need to, to have somebody who is looking at this. And, uh, but most so, it's because it's so easy to, uh, to, to make a box with many gigabits. Uh, so, and then uh, it's sent to you and it's up to you to be responsible and to look at uh, all of this. So I think, again, it's very important to, to take this time to analyze. And the program, for example, is uh, it's the same. The program is not always uh, the expression of needs. The program is uh, sometimes, very often, uh, the result of uh, multiple decisions, uh, the result of uh, compromise between the discussion, uh, the result of long time of discussion, and when it arrives to the competition, probably uh, it's, uh, it has already changed and the program is not any more relevant. So it's why it's very important to analyze all of this, and also with the site, 
um, and to um, to consider that finally the program is not is not is, is not a truth. It's something that is uh, we can consider as a basis, and then we can consider that in the in the project we can uh, we can we we can change we can propose different ways because before we have tried to understand what are the needs which are behind the program. And for us, it's something very important. And in many projects, we, the proposal we are doing in the competition is not exactly responding to the program. Sometimes it works because we, we, we have in front an intelligent uh, jury or, or um, intelligent because, because they, they are able to analyze w why we did this, uh, this, answer, this answer. But uh, in uh, most of the case, uh, it, it fails because we have not ticked uh, the box uh, as it was uh, requested. But for us, it's very important to keep uh, this... Um, this, this capacity of uh, analyzing and uh, criticizing, criticizing not to, to oppose always to something, but to understand if uh, finally uh, what is requested is the right answer uh, to, the, to the situation. Um, today, we, uh, this evening, we talk about this uh, process, the, the beginning, you talk about the beginning of the, the process of the project that uh, we always uh, hear in the school, we need to draw, we need to draw, and draw first, and blah, blah, blah. And, and today say, no, before draw, we need to think, we need to uh, create the ideas, we need to understand what we can do and why we can do this and create a or form that to see that what we, why we can build this, why we can, why we can build something. And I uh, share with you uh, about this time in this uh, specific competition that uh, we have uh, uh, the possibility to work not only with architects, was a memorial, really sad program, um, but talk about, uh, talk with not only with an uh, architect or urbanist, talk with psychologists, with anthropologists, with sociologists, and stay in a table without drawings, only thinking about what we can do this and how, no, que queremos hacer and why we can do this and how we will do this. And imagine this process before I start to draw. It's, it's beautiful. And the draw come after and after come the ideas to how uh, to start to build and but have exist all this time that we need to decante decante decantar how you say decantar huh? you let you give time send <laughs> maybe what I don't know uh, <laughs> the ideas and to uh, know why we will we want to do this okay um so i think i should not monopolize the conversation and i'm wondering if um any of you from the audience or uh, the students that are also here uh from from the workshop uh would, would have any question for Anne or gloria we have i think mics that we can pass by Hi, thank you for the speech, it was really wonderful. I have a question regarding the sustainability of the materials that you said. Let's say you have an abandoned building. What is the steps that you take? You first go to the abandoned building, you check everything, and then how do you recycle the materials? This is my question. I think before recycling materials, it's important to recycle or to, to reuse um, the space. 
because uh, uh, the materials is um, is um, f I would say a kind of s secondary question, but first is the space and uh, and the floors you have. So this is uh, the the most important because floor space uh, is is already a lot. So and if you don't destroy it, so. In a way, for me, um, if, we, if we take care enough of what we have, we should not have to talk about recycling materials because we would uh, reuse them on the site. But it's very clear that the materials have different span of lives. And that you, uh, you, uh, some materials after 20, 40 years, they need to be, uh, uh, they, they need to be uh, uh, repaired or uh, redone. But again, it's, a, it's an evaluation of uh, uh, very precise that must be done on the site and evaluate what, what is still uh, useful and that you can keep. So uh, it's, it's, um, it's a process of, uh, again, of uh, inventory uh, that must be made uh, very carefully. But today we see that here and there, there is also this, uh, uh, the principle of uh, um, reusing materials to do new constructions. Uh, but in fact, if you look at, it's, it's, it's a really big uh, communication on that. But if you look really uh, how many uh, materials can be recycled from or reused from a demolition, it's to, today it's still something very small. It's 15%. Uh, so it's why the best is not to demolish because demolishing is a big uh, loss of uh, CO2, of carbon. So it's why as, as, uh, as, as much we can keep on site and just replace what has to be replaced, uh, for me, it's, uh, it's the best uh, solution. But for that, it needs to look at, uh, to look at things very, uh, very carefully so without any uh, a priori on, uh, on, uh, on, on the materials. But um, the, the big waste is when, when you demolish even. Uh, and, and for me, I, I don't really understand why, for example, uh, f uh, facades uh, removed or demolished from uh, a building uh, because uh, they are supposed to be too bad to stay why they should be good uh, in a new construction. So uh, for me, the best is to, to keep on site and to do the best uh, uh, with what we have on site and uh, to evaluate uh, what is still the span of light of every material and, and deal with it. Thank you. In, in, my, in my works, sometimes we uh, reuse the building and but we need to take out some walls or some part of the of the existing building and we collect all this material we then we use worker to separate the the bricks and the 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 all the others um, pieces to reuse one part of this and we rebuild with the broken bricks, demolition material, uh, and we, when we do this, uh, we use 60% of the wall we made with broken bricks and 40% with concrete, but we can do this only for, for, with four centimeters or five centimeters and yes, we use 60% more, uh, less material uh, and try to reuse this. Why? Because the, in the beginning was because was m cheaper reuse this than take uh, out of the, the place of the construction because we, we will need uh, some uh, transportation to take up all the, the construction play, this uh, material that we take, when we take out some walls, that if we reuse them inside of the buildings. And we normally prefabricate these pieces on the floor and it have some process to build easy uh, to, again, give more uh, mano de obra, more work for the workers, and 
use less energy uh, to produce a new material to, to rebuild. But uh, yes, of course, the first thing I agree totally is don't demolish that who work uh, is the first things. Don't demolish nothing. Don't demolish the building and don't take out trees and don't take, take out uh, um, things that uh, is, uh, collaborate with the building. Um, I remember one anecdote in, in my office, in my first office. We, we have a, a room in, in 40 meters, the, the land, the terreno, a, a small construction in the, in the back. Um, in Paraguay, we have 50 degree in summer. Um, uh, this uh, garden ha have a lot of trees, and uh, the the roof was always full of leaves. And nor normally, after a big rain, we need the intern. When uh, at this time I was an intern, need to go to the roof to take out the leaf, uh, the, the the la canaleta, the uh, the tiles, take out the leaf to, for the next rain. And one day we decide to take out all the leaf of the, the, the roof. And when uh, the boss appears, say, whoa, this will be a really long summer. Because we work with all the material, also with the, these leaves. We have, a, have 20 centimeters the protection for the summer, for the sunlight. And uh, understand this, that everything around us can work to build better is, is one uh, stadium us. We need to see what we can use around us. Sometimes we uh, need to build more than we demoli demolish, and we buy this demolition material. We try to buy, but never buy. The people give us the demolition material, and we reuse this to uh, 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 build more uh, walls and more things. So just to, to complete in the, the question, but in fact, in the, for the, the process of transformation, um, it's also important to deconstruct some arguments which, uh, which, which are repeated since years and years and years. And that uh, always, uh, finally, at the end, demonstrate that it's better to demolish and rebuild. So it's, for example, it's uh, the argument that it's more expensive to renovate a building than... Uh, to uh, to demolish and rebuild, which is absolutely wrong. No. Uh, if you if you study carefully the cost of every material, everything, you see that it's a, it's a very uh, easy uh, argument. Or, for example, another argument which today is also very important that a building which has asbestos, uh, it's, uh, it's it's you have to demolish to remove the asbestos, which is absolutely wrong because for a uh, reason of uh, security, of uh, safety of the workers, uh, to demolish a building, it, has, it, it, it must have been before uh, cleaned uh, from the asbestos. So all of this, it's also arguments that must be deconstructed and opposed uh, to those who, uh, who, who talk about that and would finally de decide, no, no, finally we... Uh, we, we remove and we change because, uh, and it's also an issue of economy and today the economy is uh, extremely important because we, um, we need to, to, to do a lot of things and we need to spend less. So it's why it's important also to, to compare carefully situation to, uh, to, to analyze what, uh, why this uh, costs more than this, this and, uh, and then we arrive to, to control the economy and to, uh, and to make uh, better with less. Thank you. 
anyone else? Any other question? All right. Um, I, I would like to close with maybe um, what is sort of bringing us here. And um, I'm also very curious, and I would like to know um, a little bit about your experiencing of your experiences as a protege, and you're in the process, but as a mentor, um, because it seems a quite of a, um, interesting setup. It's not like, a, let's say, a, a professor and student relationship. It's not employer and employee. Uh, it's not. It, it's something between, let's say, colleagues, because you're actually collaborating and working together with with colleagues. So. Um, Gloria, you, you went through this, and I was curious what was maybe the lessons that you had through that experience, and maybe Anne, you can also speak a little bit about your current experience. Uh, yes, the, my mentorship was almost 10 years ago. <laughs> um, and in the beginning, I remember many people asked me about this. How was your experience? How were, and when it's so close for me, it was so difficult to describe this, uh, this, uh, these things that are uh, happen with me in, uh, in this moment. But now with the distance, I can see all this time that I uh, spend with, with Peter in Halden's time. Imagine, in Asuncion have 50 degree and I take a fly, in 24 hours, I ride to Halden's night with minus 15 degree, like 65 degree, the difference between one place and the other, in the middle of the mountain, in the middle of the, the uh, plateau in South America. It was a lot of difference. But at the same time, I arrived to this place and see this man working a... a Eight, more than eight hours by day without problem because we need to uh, develop some uh, project, we needed to finish some project. And at the same time, after uh, made this, we take a time to rest. Okay, we work a lot this, this weekend, but we, uh, we can take a time now to rest and uh, see this was, okay, it's not a, a, a crazy, it's not so crazy work uh, a lot in one idea and try to be better and better and better this, uh, this, uh, this pedazo de mundo. And the, at the same time, learn about uh, the importance of the time. The Sumter project can be uh, need 15 years, like a project, like, but uh, understand that the things need time. Uh, maybe in some reality need less time, but not three months or not a, a, a six months. No, need time to moderate and to to be clear, and if we don't have the answer, it's okay, we can say no, now we don't have the answer. We can develop more, we can think more about this, and if we uh, finish one project and made, uh, see this is not good, we can take out and start again, because it's better start again there with the paper that they start again after build the, and but this was the time that I I spent with with uh, Peter. But for me, the best thing in this program is the possibility to have the community with all the other protege, because we are around more than fifty protege now in these different disciplines. And we have the opportunity to spend time only to talk and to talk about our work and also to spend time working together and have some funds to make a project together. And these uh, kind of things, I, I really love that this uh, project. <laughs> 
still I'm, <clears throat> I'm new in the process, and, but um, I, for me it's a very interesting program that offers uh, the possibility to, to young uh, artists, uh, in my case it's our architecture, uh, to develop um, a research, to develop a project uh, over one year and one year and a half, uh, which is something very important because it's not uh, very often that you have this uh, opportunity to not to be stressed by the result, but uh, that you know that you have your time to develop uh, the strategies, to develop research in different ways. And uh, I, um, I consider this, uh, this uh, what, what I'm doing now with uh, Arin, uh, it's, it's a kind of um, um, exchange uh, that we are doing uh, together. She brings me a, a subject which is very interesting in a neighborhood, a very interesting neighborhood in uh, Beirut with different um, locations and uh, this opportunity of uh, <clears throat> renovating, reprogramming, uh, thinking about uh, economical models, how to make it in a, in a low-income neighborhood. And uh, we exchange a lot on this. Uh, so <clears throat> she brings me this, um, this situation. And uh, I, try to, I try to give my, uh, my input with uh, some, uh, pro some projects of reference that could uh, inform the process. Uh, we try also to, uh, to work on, uh, on method how to work on uh, such uh, a very specific situation when uh, you start from an existing and uh, how to make sure that we, uh, uh, that we uh, look at uh, the right things. Uh, so uh, for me, it's a very uh, rich um, and interesting uh, program and uh, uh, a, a good also continuity for me uh, uh, to, um, as, as a teacher. Uh, to uh, to continue and and I, I never sought my role uh, of teacher of I learn something to you but much more as this kind of uh, exchange so uh, we are in this uh, kind of exchange and collaboration and uh, for now it's very interesting and very rich very nice Anne and Gloria thank you so much uh, for being uh, here with us and thank you all uh, for joining thank you very much thank you Gracias.